This is going to air on January 1st, 2024, uh, New Year's Day. I am recording it early, so this is the not so live live. On January 1st, I will be spending the day with my sons and their families. Uh, we have a new grandbaby who's coming in March, so we're very excited to be able to spend some time with uh, uh, the happy pregnant couple, <laughs> uh, my eldest son. Joshua and his uh, wonderful woman, Kate. And then we'll be with Andy and Lauren, my younger son and his wife, and my two grandies, Stella, who's eight, and Sam as five. So I'll be spending January 1st uh, with them, looking forward to a great new year. Um, so if you are new to the block of the month, my name is Barbara Black. Uh, I work with the quilt show. Uh, they kind of call me the shepherd or shepherdess of the um block of the month. I answer your questions. I help give tips and tricks and uh, keep an eye on the forum and all those kind of things. So I've been a star member since the very first day that I could become a star member 15 or so years ago. Uh, and it's uh, the, absolutely the best money that I ever spent on my quilting life. And now I get to be, be part of the team too. So uh, anyway, so welcome if you're new to Pick a Petal, the block of the month. Um, and if you're returning, if you've done some of the other blocks of the month, um, the welcome back. I'm very happy to see you. So um, I'll give it just another minute or two as uh, people join in. As I said, I, this won't be li I won't be live, um, but I will be able to answer your questions later. Um, so do put the com you can put comments, questions there in the comments. I can often go back to YouTube. In fact, I can probably never go back to YouTube to answer questions there, but um, but I can on the Facebook so and on the forum, which I'll show you again. There's a, a great place on our website where you can um, get all your questions answered. That's what I'm here for is to answer your questions. You're not out there on, on your own trying to figure all this stuff out. So um, I'm, I'm going to in just a few minutes, I'm going to give you a little tour of the website and I'll show you my blog and a couple other things for you to know how to find your way around things. Um, my blog does have lots of information. I've got tutorials. Uh, I write a blog post now once a week. It comes out typically on Sunday. And one of those each month will be about the block of the month. So I'm going to show that to you as well. So uh, let me get us in there too. I'm going to share my screen and I'll take you to the quilt show, uh, dot com, so you can see all the different things that we have and how to find your way around. Okay, this is the home page, the, uh, the quilt show dot com. And if you are not a member down at the bottom, it gives you reasons why you would want to be a star member for forty nine dollars. You get a wealth of information, uh, so much stuff. All of the past shows, 15 years worth of shows are still available to you. So there's a lot of information there on the home screen. You know that you're signed in if it says welcome and your name. So sometimes I have to sign in more than once. I think I've signed in and I click the little button and it doesn't say welcome, Barbara. So if uh, you don't have it saying welcome and your name, then just try again until it, it does. So now I know that I'm signed in and I'll be able to go to see the pattern for the block of the month. The pattern for Pick a Petal is only available to star members. So I'm going to start with Learn. Over here is the tab where we have classes and projects. So we go to Learn. And we have a banner set up already, pick a pedal that's right there. So you can simply click on it, learn more. If the banner isn't there and something else is in its place, you can do block of the month and all of them come up numerically starting with the most recent one. So we'll click on pick a pedal. Okay. All right. So here we have pick a pedal. That is a photograph of Jen's quilt. Jen Kingwell designed this exclusively for star members of the quilt show to save it. If you want to save it to your computer, you can right click on it and save image as, and then give it a name and find it. Then you could print it again if you wanted it or have it someplace where you could find it easily. Um, when the first thing that's always on this, say this is the introduction page is the fabric requirements and introduction, some basic information. You can view it. And then there's also the links to these Facebook Lives. And you click on this, and every time that there is one, it gets added to the list. Of course, this one that's going to air today, January 1st, um, will be up here shortly after uh, it ends on the Facebook Live. It'll be um, right there on the YouTube channel, but you'll have a link to it right here. And there's also a link in there when you click on this where it says View to my blog as well, if you forget how to find my blog. But what we're looking for is month one pattern. Pick a petal, block of the month, 2024, month one. So the first thing that you'll do is view it. Okay. 
It's very important that you print everything accurately. So we strongly recommend that when you're ready to print the pattern, you don't view the file and print from there. You in fact, download it and print it from the download. For some reason, a lot of times the printers will not be accurate. And I did this in practice to try to get this to make sure that we had these right. And when I printed from a viewed file, the one inch scale box, which is critically important when you're making your templates, was not accurate. So do a download, save it on your computer where you know where it is, and print from the download. For speed, I'm just going to do view file so you can see what's there. So uh, it's a PDF. This one happens to have six pages for month one. It tells you the size of the quilt, 72 by 72, the basic fabric requirements for the entire quilt. Um, and then what you'll cut for this first month and all of this as you go down through. So you can see all of these pages. And I don't print mine in color, but you certainly can if you wish. I print it in black and white. All of Jen's instructions are for hand piecing. And I'm going to give you um, some alternative. I prefer to machine piece for speed. So I'm going to give you some my what I did. This is the page that is most important if you are making your own templates. And that one inch square box has got to be one inch square, not slightly bigger than one, not slightly smaller than one. It needs to be the correct size in order for you to be able to make these templates the correct size. So when you go to print this, be sure you tell the printer that you want it to print actual size. You don't want it to fit to page. You don't want it to scale. You want it to be actual size. So that's the pattern. And each month you will find it um, here. And you know where you are that when these call, we call these the breadcrumbs, there's the home page, you're in learn, then the category is block of the month. The current block of the month you're looking at is 2024, pick a pedal. And that's, this is month one. And so if I just go backwards one more, it takes us back to that primary page. Um, and then month next one, month, month two will show up. And the month after that will be month three and on like that. So that these pages, this was always where you will find your um, patterns for pick a pedal. The other thing up here I want to show you is the forum. I live on the forum. I spend a lot of time on the forum. This is where you can ask me questions and I answer the questions for you. Um, at the t and there's lots of other things on the forum besides just block of the month of the classrooms, Alex's class and Ricky's and D Christopher's Saturday samplers. All of those are up here in the classrooms. Um, we had Robin Long this summer do a really great project. But to go, I just today I'm going to take you to block of the month, pick a pedal. And we click on that and the forum comes up. This yellow one is called a sticky topic. I have it, it will always stick there in the top. It'll, it'll be the first one that you see. It's my instructions on how to upload photos. We do encourage you to show us what you're doing on the forum. Uh, I'll have a topic made up called month one, show your progress here. And another topic, month one, ask your questions here. Uh, so, but this uploading your photos, it will explain to you how to do that. The biggest problem people have uploading photos is when their photos are too large and they won't get uploaded. But I do have instructions in this same uh, post on how to resize them smaller so that you can make them fit into the, the website. So anyway, but there's all of these different um, topics that are up here already. I'm just going to show you this one. Show us your fabrics. Uh, we I started this back in... I'll click on the first one. I click latest activity. Well, la latest activity takes us to the most recent. I start with post. It'll take me to the first one. And I set this up December 3rd when we first started getting excited and people wanted to know about them. Um, they were starting to think about their fabrics if they weren't using the kit. So people have posted pictures and things like that. The, what I want to show you here is that every one of our topics has a button called photos. And when you click on that, any of the posts that are in that topic that has a photo, the photos show up here. And this happens to have 13 photos so far on the two pages worth of posts. And so you can just see at a glance if there's photos that you want to go look at. And then you can go back into uh, the actual topic 
by going back to posts and scroll down till you find that particular post. Uh, the rooster is mine. I put that picture up. Someone was asking how do they go about picking a palette for their if they don't want to use the kit. And so I have this picture of this rooster uh, from Kauai in Hawaii. The roosters run wild. And that is a spectacularly beautiful rooster. I loved all the colors to that rooster. And so I simply used it as a way to pick fabric. So this is the palette that I put together from that rooster photo. And then that's the quilt that I made from the photo from the um those fabrics. I liked it so much I've done additional quilts. I've made at least one more quilt with that same grouping of fabrics. Um, doesn't has nothing to do with the rooster other than that was the photo that I used for color. Anyway, so that's how you can find your way around these topics. We do encourage you to post and when you go to block of the month 2024 pick a petal, anything that's important people if you start your own topic, um, I do encourage you to put your questions for month one under the topic that is made up called um, month one, ask your questions here, so that the questions that pertain to that month are all there in one particular pace. And you don't have to go page after page after page looking around. Uh, but there's already some things that are posted there you might find interesting. So that's how um, you get around on the forum. Now, the most important thing I'm going to recommend that you do before you start this project is that you watch Jen's show. And at the day that I'm um, recording this, which is about a um, day before Christmas, we don't have the show on this page yet. But um, when you come January 1st, this box will have Jen Kingwell there. It'll be our latest show. The, the show is also free all year, all of 2024 for everyone. So if you are not a star member and you're thinking about maybe you want to do pick a pedal, but you're really not sure, you have the access all year long, all of 2024 to actually watch the show. If you are already a star member, tell your friends who aren't to be sure to watch the show. This is the one video that we have from Jen showing everything that she wants you to know about how you make this quilt. She is a hand piecer, so I'm sure I haven't been able to see the show yet because it hasn't aired yet. But I'm sure that her instructions on her hand piecing techniques, you will find very, very helpful and uh, informative. So um, before you start, watch the show. That's the best advice that I can give you. So, OK, now I'm going to take you quickly to my blog. Uh, again, this is going to post on December 31st. I post my blogs on Sundays. And but I so it hasn't posted yet. It's not live, but this is a preview that shows you the exact thing. So um, my blog is on is bbquiltmaker.blogspot.com. And I've already showed you other ways that you can find it. It's also in my signature every time that I um, reply on a start a topic. So it, this is what it looks like each month. Pick a petal, month one. And so I have that same photo. You could save the photo from there if you wanted to. I talk about the live broadcasts. My best tip is that you watch Jen's show before you begin and then gather the get the pattern and get started. So that shows you how to get there. Now I want to talk about the acrylic templates. They are an add-on. They don't come with the kit. You can purchase them additionally if you want. You don't need the kit if you don't want the kit, if you're going to use your own fabrics. I told Alex I thought that the acrylic templates were simply essential to me. And you can see all 14 of them there. This is a picture off of the shop webpage from thequiltshow.com. And you can see the shapes. You don't have to buy the acrylic templates. You can rotary cut around them. Of course, you can trace around them. They have the drilled holes at every one of the little intersections, which is essential for um, hand piecing, I think. And if you're going to make your own templates out of template plastic, you get an idea of what the shapes look like. And you certainly can do that. But as I mentioned, it is critically important that the template page be accurate, that it be printed exactly that one inch box has got to be one inch before you make those templates. So um, that's, I talked a little bit there about the importance for the accuracy. I do prefer to machine piece over hand piecing simply for speed. Uh, one of my mottos is I want the fastest method that gives me the result I want. So I try different tips and sometimes hand piecing can be faster than machine piecing if it's depending on what the project is. But I also assembled my star differently and I'm going to show you how I did that. The kit fabrics, I am using the kit fabrics, but not exclusively. And our kit fabrics do not match Jen's exactly because she also has a deep stash and used some of her favorite fabrics that are no longer available. So the kit was assembled with 100 fabrics that resemble 
uh, Jen's fabrics and have the feel of the Jen Kingwell quilt, but they are not exact. So you're not going to be able to find the exact fabrics in the kit that matches her quilt. And we're not going to tell you use this fabric for this space and use this fabric in this space. You're going to be able to decide for yourself where all the fabrics go. The great thing about that is uh, even though everyone who is using the kit, and there will be hundreds of people using the kit, everyone's quilt will be different because I say that each quilt will be as unique as the maker because you will be deciding which fabrics go where. Uh, overall, you'll have the same effect of the quilt. So um, that just shows you the, the process here. And I've got pictures, as you can see, of step the steps by steps. And I'm going to actually show that to you in a few minutes. Now, there were two videos that I was put onto by someone on the forum. Sonia on the forum had recommended these two videos for glue basting a curve and then machine sewing with the, the, the seam already glued. And that was fairly new to me. I'd seen it before. I think Alex has demonstrated it, but I hadn't tried it. And so I did try it. And it's very, very uh, impressive how you can get a really nice, accurate machine sewn curve if you glue base first. And um, anyway, so the links are right there so you can get to those two videos um, and see them as well. But you see what I typically do. I've got these photos and shows you all the way down. I didn't make my star the way Jen does. She makes first the entire star and then she insets each one of these eight fans. I made mine in two halves with the three fans already inset up there and these three fans here. And then once the center has been sewn, I inset the two remaining left and right fans. That's how I did it by machine. The other thing that I always do anytime I have six or more fabrics coming together, and this has eight right there in the center, is I machine baste it first, which sim simply means that I turn the stitch length way up to about a five, five and a half, and I sew from about an inch on half an inch or so on either side. So about an inch, sometimes a little more. It doesn't just... I fiddle with it, I make sure I get it as flat as I can and as connected, and I did press those seams open, and then I check to see how I like that middle with basting stitches. If it is um, meets my satisfaction and I'm happy with it, like this one looked, I simply turn the stitch length back to normal, and then I sew the whole seam. With these Y seams or these inset seams, you need to start and stop at the dot, which is a quarter inch in, and Jen's instructions tell you to be sure to do that. So this is the sewn seam coming down here that I've machine sewn that I wanted to, in the picture, you can pop this up and look at it bigger. And now you will see that I've backstitched at the dots at either end of those. So anyway, um, I also did some things wrong and I'm, I'm often will show those to you to prevent you from doing them. There's not a lot of room around these templates. So I made them larger and I'll show you that up close and personal here in a few minutes. But I chopped off, I, I followed the edge of the template there. And when I got all done and put my block together, um, there's that the frame that goes around it. I think you can even see it wasn't large enough. But I'm, something I did when I missed, ugh, just don't do that. I'm going to show you a solution to, to not do that so that I can uh, put this in. And Jen, as I said, hand pieces all of this, but I machine pieced it and I showed my process of how I did that. And uh, stitching slow, it's not how fast can you sew it, it's how accurately. And so I used a stiletto to hold it there on the bed of the machine as I stitched around. I First I pinned at all the intersections, all the dots, put additional pins in between if I needed them. I didn't glue base this long pin all uh, seam, although you could, um, but I didn't. I just worked slowly and went my way around and I was fine with it when it got all done. So. And then that problem that I mentioned, the oops, I had to add a small piece, and I'm talking about small, that's about three quarters of an inch there, but I had to add it in there, which puts a heck of a lot of bulk right there at the corners. So I didn't want to cut all new frame pieces and start over again. So that was my workaround. When it's all done, you won't see them, but you don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you how not to, to have that happen. And um, so that's how the, the blog works, and that's what that looks like. And now let me switch back to the screen. and I'm going to go to my document camera. Okay, so here is the, the pattern. Um, as I said, that we've got the page, um, these pages that are, came right out of the printing, which I showed you. The 
page that's most important for if you're making your own templates is this. This is the last page and you can see that one inch square is very important that it actually measures one inch so that the templates are the correct size. So I've got those there. Here you can see this is another one that I have printed because I did have to test it several times. I tested it from my iPad and I tested it from uh, my computer and I did want to make sure that they were correct. And as I said, when I did print it simply from a viewed file, it was not correct. And so I don't want to do that. Anyway, but here's the templates that we have and you can see that they're how they, they work out. All right. The I want to show you this, this one first so I don't forget to mention that. Here's, this is that oops that I did. Let me just move this off to the side. So there's very little space here um, to the outside edge. And I drew it with a pencil here so that you could see it. This time I added a half an inch. The little picture that's on my blog, I only added about a quarter and it really wasn't enough. What I was talking about with the what not to do is once I had this piece trimmed, I actually followed the edge of that, the angle and made that slit and cut this off. I wouldn't do that now. I would leave this extra large out here. That's It's all going to be trimmed away later. I came straight across with this just to get it started, to get my frame made. Once my frame is made and the star center star is sewn into that frame, then I'm going to use a big ruler. Um, the square is 16 and a half when it's with the seam allowance included, the big center. And I need to get that to be correct. So I've left extra out here and I didn't hit those angles this way. I've just, you can see this is a 90 degree angle out here and a 45 degree angle on this one. So that's important how you do this and you don't screw up like I did and have that problem. What I did with the wet, the blades, I had made the decision that there are eight blades, eight fans in this particular uh, center quilt. So eight of them, and they have four blades each. So that's 32. I just went through the kit fabrics and I cut a strip and I, it was a three inch strip. I just went through, pulled out 32 fabrics. I decided I didn't want any duplicates in those eight fans that go around. So I pulled out 32 of the fabrics, cut a three inch strip off of each one, and then I traced around to make my templates. Well, what if you have extra fabrics like I do? I have leftover, I have a sinful amount of fabrics, folks, but I have leftovers from um, Garden Party Down Under. I have leftovers from Homeward Bound. This is a, a Tula Pink fabric that came from one of those. And it's a two and a half inch strip. It's a jelly roll strip. Now it won't fit this way, but it will fit this way. And so um, because they were extra fabrics and I had it, they're just leftovers essentially. I'm, if I lay it like this with the straight of grain, one of these straight sides on the straight of grain, that's, that does put bias here, but at least that gives me one side that's straight. If you simply put it like this, you're actually giving yourself two edges of bias. So I just would lay it like here and then trace around it. You have a couple of choices for tracing. I like the Micron 05 um, mark pen but it is permanent and on some of these light fabrics the ink may seep through into the front which you wouldn't want it's a permanent mark but uh, and you have to be careful it's got a fine point what I like about this is it absolutely fits in the holes to give you those dots so the very first thing I do is I make mark the dots and then I trace around it so here I'm going to trace around it with this ink pen you are going to cut off the inked line. And I can't stress that enough, whether you're using these templates or you are making your own templates. If you leave the pencil line in place, you have made this piece larger by the width of the pencil line. You might not think that's very important, but there are quite a few of these. And the more of these you add, each one gets a little bit larger and a little bit larger. So um, use find the marker that works for you with these templates or with your own that you make. I do like this one best. A standard mechanical pencil, uh, I mean a regular lead pencil will work. You just have to keep sharpening it to get that point good and sharp, but it will also fit down inside these holes. My go-to pencil a lot of times is just a plain old, this is an inexpensive little mechanical pencil. And it's, uh, this one happens to be a point seven lead. The problem for me is I'm kind of heavy handed. And so when I um, push through and punch down on this hole, I tend to break the lead and I have to keep, you know, putting more and more lead to get it to go. So a regular old lead pencil will probably do the trick. But um, so I've traced around those. I made the 32 of those and then I cut them out. 
So what I want to show you here, the nice thing about the fact that that has straight lines is I could simply use a rotary cutter and a ruler to cut off the lines. You can see that the top and bottom still has the lines there because I'm going to use scissors to cut those off. And my favorite scissors are the Karen K. Buckley Perfect Scissors. We do sell these on the shop, the Quilt Show shop site. Um, this is a size I like best for a lot of this kind of stuff. Fits my hand really well. And um, But I want to make sure that I remove. So I'm going to cut just on the inside of that drawn line so that this shape will be exactly the size that the template was. And so you can see, but I rotary cut them real quick, the two sides, and then I just use scissors uh, to cut the rest of those as well. So that shows you the, oh, and a sandpaper board. On Jen's list in the um, fabric and introduction pa page that I showed you right up front, she has a list of recommended supplies and one that she recommends is sandpaper. This just happens to be a piece of fine grain sandpaper. Uh, it's been taped to a, um, you can probably see this is just a clipboard. You can tape it inside of a manila folder, which I have somewhere and haven't been able to put my hands on once I started looking for it. I do have one here somewhere. So that's how that part works. Now, the nice thing about machine piecing these is that once you've got these cut, remember there's eight of these, so there's 32 of these blades. This was a snap to sew together. Uh, first I did pairs and then I did pairs of pairs and I made eight of these fans and I sewed from outside edge to outside edge. I didn't stop at the dots. There was no reason to do that. I just went all the way from one end to the other. Very fast to machine piece these should you wish to machine piece. The handle is cut from the same fabric as the background. If you have the kit, uh, there are 100 fabrics in there. One of them, this fabric, is a fat quarter and it's designed for the center star background. The All the other fabrics are fat eights, so they're not large enough for you to use this template to make cut the pieces for the back. But what I want to show you, have you just take note of, is that this is directional fabric. You can see these lines are running this way. If it's important to you how the lines run run as you cut them out, pay attention to how you're cutting them. This is the piece that's left over. I already cut one long strip of the fabric off so that I could cut these like this. But if you wanted them to go, have four of them go this way and four of them go in the opposite direction, you would need to make sure that you worked from that larger, that fat quarter of fabric to do that. And so just bear that in mind if it's important to you how the uh, lines go. The handle is also made from that using the way Jen did it, so I decided to do the same thing. And I've just got those little pieces cut. And again, I did it the exact same way that I've shown you. I traced around on the back side, gave myself the three little dots, the three little holes. Okay, And I have um, pinned these together, sewn them together, and I did it in pairs, so it was just really easy to do. Don't agonize over which fabrics go together. They all go together. There's 32 of them, make 16 pairs, and then find which pairs seem to play best together. I, um, when I went to sew this to this, I simply folded this handle, it's hard getting it off the sandpaper, folded it in half, my little shape, and that gave me the center, and the center aligns right here with the center. If you watch the glue basting uh, video, the glue, and it is this uh, Quilter Select fabric glue stick that the person on the video uses. It's the yellow glue, which is designed for fabric um, and not blue glue, was designed for paper. So she um, recommends this, and this is my go-to fabric glue stick. Okay. But she puts the glue on the humpy curve. I call this the, you know, the humpity curve. And then she pins, well, you, you don't pin, you're using the glue instead of pins. I would align this middle with the middle there that I've where I folded it in half and gave myself a crease. Let me pick it up off of here. Maybe I can do it in my hand so you can see it. So I would align that with the glue. The glue dries quickly, so you're going to do this pretty quickly. I turn this edge over here and I squoze, hit it, hit it real good, squeezed it really tight with my thumb and finger. Did the same thing over here. And you could, it's easier to do it when you're not under the camera. But that gets the whole thing in there. And um, you can heat set it with a, a iron if you want to and just get that going. But um, I found that it really worked and I was able to sew slowly. 
the glue is on the uppy side and the piece that you're going to sew with is these blades are on top and that's so that it works the best for machine sewing and again as I came and sewed I just used the edge of the stiletto to hold it in place it's, it's a slow process of machine sewing it's not super fast but uh, for me it was still faster than hand piecing but Having said that, there's no reason that you couldn't machine piece the blades and then hand sew the curve. You could take those with you. Hand sewing has the beauty of being uh, something that you can move along and take with you. So um, that's the process of, of doing that, however you get your fan blades made. And so let me see where we're at. Um, okay, the tools that I particularly like, the everything that's on Jen's list, I agree with. I do like a stiletto. This is a really good quality one. It helps me at my sewing machine. Obviously, as I said, it helped me pick these fabrics up off of the sandpaper board. Um, the pens, the mechanical pencils. Um, these are inexpensive mechanical pencils. I, it's my go-to marker for a lot of things. If, if I can draw, as long as I can see it, especially if I'm drawing on the wrong side of the fabric, I want to be able to see it. So that's what I like. So, okay, let me go back to the webcam now. Okay, um, so um, have if the questions that you have, please use the forum uh, where it says ask questions here, month one, ask questions here. Uh, behind me on the wall, right there, is months one through three. I wanted a backdrop for you so you could see something. That's months one through three, the center star, of course, and then in month one, we'll do one of the blocks, and in month two, we'll do another one of the blocks. So those will be coming up. I do give you uh, some alternatives on how to, to make these blocks. This is next month's block. This is the month one, month two block. It's block one in month two. Um, and Jen's instructions for hand piecing has you cut every one of these pieces out with a template. I've got instructions for you. I've, I figured out the sizes. You can make a, it's not an equal nine patch, it's an unequal nine patch, and which is what I did. And I cut all the pieces for those. I made a big nine patch in the middle, and then I am hand appliquing these semicircle kind of crescent shapes around my edges. So all of my nine patches are done. It was very easy for me to make them as leader enders when I was doing other projects. All, um, all of those are made. And now at night when I'm sitting and sewing, I just hand applique these little um, crescents on there. And I'll have lots of step-by-step -step instructions, all the numbers that you need and everything for next month. So if you're one of those people who tends to rush ahead, especially if you have the templates, you could be done this quote by March but you're gonna not get all of the beneficial information that we're gonna provide month by month by month of some tips and techniques and other things, uh, other ways you might choose to do something. So you can use the whole year as a learning process. Um, it's your quilt, you get to decide whether you do a different kind of a block, uh, completely separate. I've got some completely separate blocks I'm thinking about using uh, to replace block two. Uh, we'll talk much more about that when we get to block two, which is in March. Um, but it's your quilt, you get to decide. The, the next live is usually the first Friday of each month. So it's scheduled for February 2nd, um, noon central time. So that's the plan for that. Um, there was something else important I wanted to tell you and it skipped my mind at the moment, but I'm sure it'll come to me. But, um, hmm. oh, well, the other thing is just that when I was, um, when I first got my template sets, I threw them all on a big bag, and every time I needed to find one for a block, I had to dump them all out on the table. So I went, well, this isn't really working very well. So I simply came up with a better solution, and I take them. Now I just put um, a month one block, a month two, and a month three. Ah, I remembered the tip. I knew if I talked long enough, I'll remember it. So one other tip for working ahead. Um, I know a lot of people like to work ahead. They get this center block done early in the month and go, oh, I have to wait till February to get the next pattern. But the outside border of this quilt has 64 of these fans. And you have the pattern now, it's the same exact size as this fan. It's a little four inch fan with four blades and the handle. If you, um, when you've got the pattern already for month one, once you get the center done, if you want something extra to do, what I recommend you do is break those 64 down into eight. And over the course of eight months, if you make eight of these extras, and it doesn't take long, these are so cute and so tiny, that if you get eight of these made each month, in eight months, you'll have all 64 of them done. 
And when we get to November, when you actually piece the border all together, you'll have all 64 of these finished. The only thing you'll still have to add to it is the background because now if you have the plastic templates, the acrylic template set, you have this shape. But if you are making your own templates, and a lot of people will, you're not going to get that shape until late in the year because that's when that last outer border is done. But it would be very easy if you have all 64 of these finished to add that remaining, um, the other half, you know, the crescent that goes up there on the top. So uh, that's just a big tip that I have. Sue Garman broke all of her patterns down like that. When you had a lot to do, rather than in one or two months have to make all of the same thing, she would take, um, you just divide it over the course of a year, make four each month, make six each month, and make eight each month. So for me, eight divided, 64 divided by eight, over the course of eight months, you could get it done. And you still have a couple of months, you could do nothing if you were busy in the summer or things like that. So um, anyway, that's the, the gist of everything. I am uh, wishing all of you a happy and healthy and quilty new year. Uh, I look forward to spending the year with you as we pick a petal. So until next time, that's a wrap.